I didn't mean to kill your brother, but he didn't die in vain. Jeff Goldblum has a great career when it comes to science fiction and horror. Whether it be his most recognizable work as Dr. Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park, or even one of his early roles like what he did in 1978's Invasion of the Body Snatchers, there's something about the guy that is just perfect for those genres. He's played a scientist more times than I think the general public is even aware of, and he always does so with authentic excellence, but one movie in particular before Jurassic Park that has gone down as one of his most iconic roles of all time, uh, it's a film that I really think needs to be seen by movie fans, no matter who you are. If you're looking for something with great special effects, a relatable set of characters, and honestly a hauntingly tragic story, well then this old film may be something you want to check out. The Fly is a 1986 science fiction horror film directed by David Cronenberg. It stars only three principal actors, Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis, and John Getz with the story being extremely isolated and focused on just a few stark locations where all of the drama takes place. By the way, this movie happens to be an updated reimagining of a 1958 film of the same name. Only this time, you get a ton of gruesome practical effects and transformation scenes with the technical advancements that the filmmakers had to work with in the 30 years between movies. Now, for those of you who haven't seen The Fly, you need to know ahead of time that this is one of Jeff Goldblum's most noteworthy performances, and it's the movie that really leans in on his acting abilities the most when it comes to selling its story. How does Brundle fly eat? Well, he found out the hard and painful way that he's very much the way a fly eats. Being a massive fan of Jurassic Park, of course I'd always wanted to see this movie, but I didn't get around to doing that until I was a teenager in high school on a horror movie craze. For years I'd heard everyone talk about it and how great it was on a science fiction level, but it wasn't one I grew up with, and all I really had to reference Goldblum's work besides Jurassic Park was Independence Day. So after going through stuff like Hellraiser, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Halloween, I made my way to a David Cronenberg movie called Scanners, and that was really cool, so I wanted to see his other films. And that's when The Fly finally came on cable one day, and I set time aside to see it, and boy, am I glad I ever did. Oh, look at this. What's this? I don't know. The story begins with Gina Davis meeting this really nerdy guy at a science conference. She's there to get some information on new advancements in technology, and Seth Brundle, Goldblum's quirky but fun character, convinces her to see what he's been working on. The two get to know each other, and Seth continues his experiments until one day, the unpredictable event of a random fly happens to get mixed up in his work. And the rest is honestly too good to give away. No spoilers here. Guys, when it comes to why people really like this movie, I think there's something special about experiencing what the characters go through and how they act out their daily lives in the film when you watch it for the first time. There's just something so honest and real in the performances and the way the scenes are written that by the time you get to the end, you get really sad to see how everything goes sideways for everyone involved. And by the way, man, I can't stress that enough. This has got to be one of the most sad endings I think I've ever seen in a science fiction film. If you thought Charlton Heston learning that he was on Earth the entire time in Planet of the Apes, spoiler alert, by the way, well then you're really gonna feel bad for Jeff Goldblum after you see The Fly. Have you ever heard of insect politics? Neither have I. Speaking of which, the reason the movie is able to deliver that great of a reaction out of people is probably because of how excellent Jeff Goldblum is in the film. A lot of people seem to only remember him as Dr. Ian Malcolm these days, but he had a long list of science fiction and horror credentials outside of that for a while, and most of it incorporated his unmistakable humor, which The Fly has a lot of. One of my favorite scenes in the movie has to be where he's pacing the room drunk, spilling out his heart to an animal test subject who's just sitting in this little chair as if he's some kind of makeshift therapist. And man, I don't know what it is about this movie, but Goldblum just knocks scenes like this out of the park. There's also other moments where he starts to become more erratic and angry in his behavior once one of his experiments goes wrong. And that's where you can really see the range Goldblum has as an actor shine through extremely well because this guy can go from zero to a hundred on a dime and he makes it feel like a hundred percent genuine. I bet you think that you woke me up about the flesh, don't you? But you only know society's straight line about the flesh. 
With that being said, it's not just Goldblum that does a good job with the performances here because Gina Davis is also super believable in her role. In fact, similar to what happened between Goldblum and Laura Dern on Jurassic Park, who were actually engaged up until the release of The Lost World, believe it or not, Gina Davis and Jeff hit it off so good that they were actually married after their work on the fly. And you can, look man, that's chemistry that you can honestly see in the movie itself. They do an exceptionally good job at portraying these characters earnestly. It's like you're watching two real people, and that's all the more tragic when you get to the end of the movie. Speaking of which, when the credits go up and you get treated with that awesome score from Howard Shore who provided some extremely memorable music for the movie long before he was working on stuff like The Lord of the Rings and Silence of the Lambs, the other aspects of the movie's technical work are great here too. If you haven't heard about how realistic and wild the practical effects work is in this movie, especially at the end where that music is just so tragic and booming, well you better get ready for a lot of Jeff Goldblum in various stages of transformations as a mutant, which all look incredible incredibly well done and his humor again man Jeff's humor is great the final creature being one of the most crazy and insane looking 80s monsters that ever came out of a good movie and it's something that usually leaves a huge impact on people when they see it this movie has got everything great acting great story great characters, great special effects, great music, and it all makes for an awesome time. The saying, be afraid, be very afraid, comes from this film, and when you get to the end, like I said, you're gonna be glad that you've finally seen it. As the general said, there's nothing I'd ask you to do that I wouldn't do myself, boys. Besides Jurassic Park, this is most definitely what Goldblum will go down in history for the most, and that's because it's excellent in almost every way you could imagine. The film was followed by a sequel in which nobody came back except John Getz, which I actually have never seen. But now that I've gotten around to re-watching the original, I may need to finally sit down and give it a chance. I've seen the 1958 version too, and I actually liked that a lot growing up, but when you watch the remake, dude, The Fly, it's just, it's an incredible movie. Anyways guys, those are all just my own thoughts on the film. Now, what did you think about it, and have you even seen the movie? If so, I'd love to know what you like the most about it, like what your favorite scene is or your favorite line of dialogue, and if you think the movie is as good as I do. When it comes to science fiction and horror, this guy was just knocking it out of the park with excellent stuff, but hey, that's just my own opinion. If you haven't seen it, dude, do yourself a favor, go watch it right now. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.